My background is um, with AT&T. Uh, I worked for AT&T for 30 plus years as an employee, um, first starting out as a CWA union employee for about 13 years before I got into management. And I have a broad background as I started in uh, the benefit organization, moved up uh, into uh, the corporate financial sector, uh, all different areas of finance. And then from there, I went into uh, human resources and consumer. And then from there, I went into access management, working with uh, the, the PUCs, filing complaints against the PUCs um, <clears throat> on behalf of AT&T. And, um, oh, one minute. And um, from there, uh, I went into the hardcore network, voice and data. And uh, from there, I went into um, the internet sector um, as an ISP, uh, technologies, web to fax, a shared hosting platform, which enabled consumers to um, buy uh, products off the internet uh, by supporting uh, customers' catalogs on the internet. And then from there, uh, bringing the internet to the edge of the network where eyeballs can um, see the content, which is CDN, um, which is really a part of cloud before cloud. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I believe that my uh, tenure there uh, working with all different types of international teams, multi-million dollar uh, products and deployments have prepared me to take on uh, the role to represent uh, the public as their senator uh, in Lamoille County. Sure, uh, well, there's uh, a couple of hot topics, right? So um, the school uh, budget is a part of that, the unification um, and the um, Global Warming Solutions Act and this carbon tax uh, that they're that's coming up, I guess, uh, in January's legislature to vote on, uh, which could possibly double um, home heating cost. So those are the two biggies. Um, when I spoke to constituents um, at the Hyde Park Field Days, gathering my signatures to be on the ballot, um, those were the greatest concerns, um, was the property taxes and the home heating uh, garbacle that has been put down um, amongst us here. And uh, so I've done a lot of uh, due diligence um, research on this. So um, to answer the, the school part is um, the unification of schools, the Acts 46, um, that both sides of the aisle voted on back in 2016 um, came about. And it's my understanding from that, that by 2022, 23, 24, uh, by year end next month, um, the system was supposed to produce progress reports on is this unification working? What's working? What's not working? And by just next month, uh, propose a draft on cost containments uh, achieved. Now, this whole pitch was uh, brought about to the constituents to bring value. That was the vote. And there was an enticement on uh, giving towns uh, reduced taxes um, on that for that vote of unification. And so uh, the cost containment is key. Apparently they did not do any um, metadata on that. They did not hire data analysts to gather that. So we will not have that data. So we do need that metadata to find out what is working and what isn't. So they are not gonna meet the legal mandate on that. So that is a big red flag. I can speak about the Mount Laurel decision that came out of New Jersey. Um, and in these development projects, there has to be legally certain amount of units that are totally geared for low income housed housing folks that qualify, whether they're in the services sector, like um, the that work for the EMS, firemen, police, um, that has worked, I have to say, very well to have those kind of guidelines 
with development projects. Um, so there needs to be structure around that. And furthermore, uh, the supermajority voted to tighten Act 250, not loosen it. So they didn't address the overall need of the housing crisis, because that is a part of it, without a doubt. Um, and also, I might add that being a landowner myself, um, if I were to partition off some of my land, I ha I can't do that uh, for a development um, because of this land gains tax. There is a six-year hold uh, for me to hold on to the land, or I'm definitely taxed like 40%. So six years is not reasonable. Um, people are surprised about that, quite frankly. So I would, I would look to reduce that. Um, I don't want to change the you know, the landscape of Vermont, the state, but we do need to have comprehensive uh, changes. And I believe those, those that Act 250 and the land gains tax is a start besides having parameters that mirror uh, the Mount Laurel decision. So I, I would bring that to the table in the state of Vermont. I agree with the governor. I mean, there is a lot of waste. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, there, the fiscal responsibility is just absent. It's just absent from this body that's been governing. I mean, it it is. We can address this homeless situation, and um, I believe there's plenty of ideas out there to do that. But we need the money, so <laughs> there are going to have to be cuts in these progressive programs without a doubt. And furthermore, um, the excessive studies that have been conducted um, over these two year terms that are just shelved and not acted upon. You have to have value. You have to have a return on investment. You can't just have study after study or studies are outdated. I'd like to take a look at how much money has been wasted on studies that have just been shelved um, so that we need to put an end to that and have some common sense approach to spending. Um, and I think that we can then have some achievable funding um, to address homelessness. And it's going to take a lot of funding and it's going to take the private sector and it's going to take the federal government. It's going to take a lot, but we have to start somewhere and we have to start with our own state house. Well, on my platform, um, I am definitely following suit to follow um, New Hampshire and Tennessee um, on banning geoengineering. Geoengineering is not regulated in this country. And even though Tennessee has a ban of cloud seeding over its state, we still had the effects of Hurricane Helene. Um, that is that is a we need to band together states to states and address the global I'm not global the geoengineering that's going on in our country because they have the patents there's well over 100 patents on steering hurricanes cloud seeding making it rain and I, I look at Helene and I just think Vietnam Operation Popeye washing out just complete destruction of infrastructure on roads. So it's undeniable that this is happening. You just look at the skies and you can see it right before your eyes. So people need to wake up before it's too late and we need to get some type of regulation and control around this. And that again is going to take <laughs> the federal government and our regulators to make that happen. Um, Yes, and as far as the our rivers are concerned and the washout, um, many constituents have been talking to me about dredging, that they used to do dredging in the rivers. And that's gonna take Army Corps of Engineers to come in here and do studies because you don't want to impede against these river walls and collapse it and, you know. So I have seen amazing work done by the Army Corps of Engineers. And 
they have I, I don't know what their backlog is i don't know what it would take to get them up here and we've been having this year over year with our rivers flooding and impacting halt people's homes and and our roads and the state has done a wonderful job on on road repair expeditiously um it's been incredible so um that has definitely charged me to address um the, the our rivers our riverbeds uh with Army Corps of Engineers, they, they need to be brought in, especially some, some spots are really, they're just hot spots, as you would say, right? Uh, Vermont has already uh, put that in the state constitution, correct? So I have no further comment. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's protected by the state. Well, I have to say I'm 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 very charged up with this campaign. I'm very excited about the possibility of having this opportunity to work uh, across the aisle. I, I mean, I'm not sure of of you know who is going to be elected. Um, it is you know it's a very exciting time in Vermont to be running um, as an independent candidate, and um, I just have to say this is a beautiful state. Uh, my intentions are true, that I want to preserve the beauty of our state, and I just want to bring back a sturdy Vermont. It has gotten since COVID, it's it's everyone I've spoken to has said it, that it's gotten very dark. And there's a darkness that has come over the country, the state, and we need to keep working on digging ourselves out of that darkness. And I want to be the light to come to Montpelier and be a part of the sea of change that is needed to bring that light. And um, I just want to thank you so much for inviting me and um, all the best, Paul. I, I really appreciate the opportunity.